Well, hello, everybody. This is Nicole Whitlock with Ecom Sellers. And I have with me today my co host. This is the Ecom Sellers podcast, first of all. And I have with me my co host on this journey, Kelly, the Ecom Mom Ward. All right, Kelly, I am so glad that you're here with me today. I know we got a lot of news to get to. So, first, I want to say happy Father's Day to your hubby. Yeah, he's <laughs> out busy working. So, he oh couldn't take God. today off. We're, we're fixing to go on vacation in like two days. So, you know, he just like can't take that day off, too. You know, <laughs> well, I get it. I understand. Well, happy Father's Day to him. And then, um, I'm trying to remember who else on your side of the family. We got my dad and my grandfather and my <laughs> yes, your dad. I didn't know. Well, okay, not your son. I must be thinking of um, um, I'm thinking of someone else on our team who has a grandbaby. So anyway, happy Father's Day to everyone. Um, well, I guess this is after Father's Day, but hope you all had a wonderful Father's Day, and I hope you all had a wonderful Juneteenth. So, with that being said, we're going to get ready to get into the news because I think we have a lot of news to cover. So, Kelly, the floor is yours. All right, um, got a lot of different things to cover. Um, let's start with Poshmark. We don't talk about Poshmark too often, but they're actually having Posh Fest live again so they're actually going to have a live uh conference in h town so sep- yep it's september 29th and 30th which are the days i work my nursing job so bum, bum, ba, dum, you know well but they will come have off to- now i i just can't i i'm using all this time off to go on vacation mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, but they plan to have some sessions to be broadcasted for those who can't attend. Um, they are right now seeking presenters to speak at the events. And, um, but right at, at this time, you know, they haven't posted the cost to attend the event at this. So keep an eye out for that. And if when we, we find out, we will let y'all know. All right. Um, I'm excited. Yeah. Okay, Amazon. Amazon's planning to open its second brick and mortar clothing store later this year in Columbus, Ohio. They opened up in LA earlier this year, and later this year they're going to open up in Columbus, Ohio. Where I'm like, okay, that's kind of different. I don't mind. Don't understand why it would be like New York City or Atlanta or you know a bigger city, but Columbus, Ohio. You know, you're getting. Props there for getting the second uh, Amazon clothing store. You know, I like the Amazon. I've bought clothes off of Amazon, so it's interesting because we had to find my daughter a, a navy blue suit for our vacation we're going on. A navy blue like business type looking suit, and we looked everywhere. We were driving around everywhere, and we couldn't find it. So we went on Amazon, and there was one, and it was you know. Seventy dollars, you know, so not too bad of a price either, and it fit her, and so that's very good. Um, they're also Prime Day twenty twenty two has been announced, July twelfth and thirteenth. Yes, yes, uh, and they're gonna start off with three weeks of early savings for members. So keep an eye out for those savings coming up. And if you're a uh, Amazon seller, yeah, you get that stuff in there now or it's, you know, might not get there in time. Um, it's Amazon drone deliveries. I've heard, you know, we talked about that a while back and uh, it was a Jeff Bezos going on and said this is, you know, going to be the new thing with Amazon is these drone deliveries and it's coming a reality in one small California town. They're trying it out. Um, They're having to deal with working with the FAA, you know, the FAA and the federal traffic commission or whatever it is. Yeah. Really dog. Now I just took you out. You had to wait. Sorry. (laughs) The dog's ringing to go out. 
Um, also, they have a new shoe shopping feature that allows customers to try on shoes virtually. So you can see them from other, you know, I guess you can't really like truly try them on on your foot, but you can see how they would look on your feet. And I they have that uh, virtual thing. I've tried it when I was buying some furniture for our new house to see how it would look in our house, you know, how the shelf would look on this wall and everything. But now they have it, you can do it with your with shoes. So that way it decreased the amount of um, returns they had. I guess if you don't like that color or then look right on your foot or something, but you can't really fit, fit it, you know. Um, eBay, eBay is launching a live shopping for collectibles. Uh, they're getting, I guess they're trying to compete against whatnot and they're actually not taking a long, you know, usually eBay, something happened and eBay is like a year later, they're going to try to, you know, but now, you know, they're, they're getting they're there. Trying to pick uh, up now. So they, they're going to start a live shopping for collectibles, like, uh, foot baseball cards and such, um, from select sellers. And bidders can access eBay Live from the app. Really? Yeah. All right. eBay Live. Okay. Mm -hmm. From um, the app. Now I'm pulling up the app just so I can see if eBay Live is over there already. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Etsy. Etsy's getting in the live game too. They are guys, they're creating live shopping events that are only available for via the Etsy mobile app from a group of select sellers. So they're, wow. you know, trying to get into this live shopping that everyone likes, like the QVC of all this stuff, you know. Everyone used to watch the QVC back in the day. And one more, um, PayPal. PayPal introduced a new option for shoppers that allow them to defer payments to monthly installments, which a lot of places already have. I see it on Mercari and such, you know, where you can buy something and then pay ten dollars a month until you pay it off so yeah it's paypal has a new way of doing that which i'm like i thought they already had it but maybe this is a different one all right and nice. that's the news i have and i'm gonna get this dog out before he makes a mess on my floor so <laughs> i'm gonna be right back all right. Well, I'll go ahead and share my screen while you're getting the dog taken care of. Okay. <laughs> Nothing like live, y'all. Nothing like live. This is like the real world here. All right. So let's go ahead. Kelly has to deal with her dog. I get it. I get it. All right. Let me see if I can figure out, you guys. I have not still figured out this stupid tool. Okay. <laughs> So the first thing I do want to, let me just do this one first. So uh, as Kelly said before, uh, Amazon's Prime Day is July the 12th, starts on July the 12th and the 13th. So the dates are here, July the 3rd, the shopping online giant. It's announced door busters in all categories, July the 12th and 13th. So this is a big deal for sellers, all online sellers. I don't care what you sell, what platform you sell on. Everybody's going to get a boost from this announcement. Everybody. All platforms are going to get a boost. So if you have products and you're selling on any of the platforms, this is your opportunity to double up, stack up, figure out what things you want to put on sale, um, you know, get with the program, <laughs> make sure you have enough, uh, you know, shipping supplies. If you ship on your own, make sure that whoever you're sourcing from has enough inventory. If you're drop shipping, uh, figure out what your, um, your shipping times are for your print on demand. Like everyone's going to get a boost. And ironically, this is also around the time that schools will start probably the first week in July, depending on where you are in the U S start the process of announcing it's time to get ready for back to school. So this is perfect timing for, you know, the kickoff of what I refer to is like, it is sort of Christmas in July because July kicks it off. And then you've got the sales from July and August for all this stuff for back to school. So there is going to be a huge, probably anywhere from six weeks, maybe six weeks worth of online sales, maybe eight weeks worth of online sales. It's you have the opportunity to begin to take advantage of right now, probably as early as the first week in July. So don't sleep on this. 
don't relax on this. Don't sit back on this. It's your opportunity to jump in. The water's fine. Get going. Rip the Band-Aid off. Get with the program <laughs> and start and start your process of getting your stuff listed and get, with, get going, okay? Like Kelly said before, we've been talking about Prime Day for actually the last six weeks because we knew it was coming. So, you know, if you're surprised by this, you have been paying attention. So I just want you to share this out with a friend. Let somebody else know about the Ecom Sellers podcast, because we've been talking about this for about six weeks. OK, um, then the next thing is I have a couple of articles. This one is from Eat This and Not That. And this is talking about the best and worst barbecue sauces on the shelves. Now, why am I mentioning this? Well, we know that we're going into... You know, the 4th of July is coming up. We already, we just had Memorial Day pass and then we got the 4th of July and we also have um, Labor Day. And so there's, those are all outdoor, let's get together, let's cook, let's eat. That's all this stuff. Well, if you're a seller, if you're an online seller, this is a great time, especially if you're doing um, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, you're looking for replens. This is a great time to begin the process of, you know, Start figuring out what your replenishables are going to be. These are things that you can sell year over year. And so when I see articles like this, I go look at the list. I go see if it's something that I can source. I go see if it's something that I can find. I go see what it's selling for on all the other platforms. So that's one of the strategies I use. And so if you want to flag and get notified about the different um you know, the little notifications, there's going to be people that are going to respond and react to these articles, these blog articles, and they're going to go shopping and you want them to find your products. So go make sure that you're paying attention to these types of articles because it gives you that instant, hey, and I can sell this year over year. And this article is going to help me with that. I mean, this is one of probably many articles that are out there, but I just pay attention to these types of articles. So this is from Eat This, Not That. And it's talking about the best uh, sauces, barbecue sauces, because we know some barbecuing is about to happen. And okay, we talking about real barbecuing, not that fake barbecuing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are from Texas. So we were talking about real barbecue and not fake barbecue. Okay, so then this next article comes to us from The Kitchen with no E. So from The Kitchen, they're talking about nine smart tips for shopping at the container store. Again, I pay attention to articles like this because if they have some tips, they're going to recommend some products. And when they recommend the products, these might be products that you've never thought of or you don't think about. And these could be products that could be helpful when, you know, spring cleaning happens. Maybe people want to get organized before back to school starts. And so, again, if there's an article about it, I'm going to go read the article. I'm going to see if I can source some of the products that are mentioned or related products or similar products or see if there's any bundle opportunities. So I pay attention to those types of articles. As we continue this trend, this is from Eat This and Not That, another one of those articles. And it has four of the best supplements for ageless skin. Again, they're telling you some people are going to react to these articles. If you don't get anything, like I'm going to keep showing this over and over again. Somebody's going to take advantage of the free information that's being given to them. Okay. You're going to pay take advantage of the free information because they are telling you what people they're, they're letting you know, like, here's what we recommend to people. And then people are taking advantage of that. They are actually taking action on what is being recommended to them. So you can come and look for this article on your own. Again, it's talking about supplements for anti-aging. And so, of course, ageless skin, not anti-aging, ageless skin. Let me correct that. And so come read the article, see if it's a, uh, any supplements that you could source, or maybe they reference related products or, or complementary products. Like maybe it's the scrubber for the face, or maybe it's the little massage brush for the face, or a special type of washcloth. And you never thought about that before for ageless skin. So again, pay attention to these articles. All right. Okay, so evidently we're going to continue this trend. This was from BuzzFeed. 31 things from Walmart you wish you had bought for your kitchen. They are literally giving you a list of things and gadgets that they are recommending. And people are going to read these articles and they're going to what? Somebody's yelling at me. They're going to react to them. Yes, 
they're going to go out and they're going to hunt for these things because they saw it in an article. It was mentioned. And so now they're going to hunt for them. And are they going to find them? Maybe. If they Do you have any of them listed? Probably not. But again, even if it's like after this article is over, this is still going to be something that you could potentially source and find or similar products. Like maybe you can't find this particular product, but maybe you can find something that's similar to it or one that you can do white label on and put yours up. Because again, people are going to be cooking from now to the end of the year. Okay. They just are. You got 4th of July. You got Labor Day. <laughs> You've got getting together for Halloween. And don't forget about the weddings and the family reunions. You've got Thanksgiving. You've got Christmas. And you got all of the baking and cooking that's going on in between there. So these types of lists are going to be helpful. And people are going to be buying Christmas gifts. So again, if you are one of those people that's always complaining, I don't know what to sell. I don't know what to source. I am literally telling you a strategy that will work over and over and over again. All right. This is from The Sun. I don't know what this article is about. Let me go see. Oh, okay. So a full list of U.S. companies uh, slammed for shrinkflation, including Subway, Gatorade, and Burger King. So a lot of companies are downsizing and or not, you know, ordering as much inventory and or supply. And so this is, again, that may mean that some of the things that they don't buy uh, could be things that are in demand or things that they don't sell or that they are selling. Could be things that will be in demand because if people go into that store and they can't find no. it, it might be something you can buy. Go ahead, Kelly. Shrinkflation is where they're selling you the same item for the same price, but they have it in a smaller container. Oh, God. So, so it's not that. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Just want to get that, at, you know. So you're like, oh, you're used to getting that Gatorade and a 32-ounce bottle. And then the next time you go and you're paying that dollar twenty-five, and you look at it and it's a 28-ounce bottle. That's, oh, you know, yeah. Well. And, you know, so you don't really notice that little change in the bottle until you're like, wait a minute, this bottle's not. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. So here's what I will say. Initially, when I read this, I didn't read it. Sorry. Well, I did read it, but that was like a week ago. Um, so when I just pulled it up, I was like, oh, this must be related to what they're doing about sending inventory back. But no, this has to do with the changing of the sizes. So uh, thank you for the correction, Kelly. Wow. Hmm. So this is going to be interesting because some of us may still find some of these products in the regular size on the shelves today and if we have them in the regular size that may mean that we could charge i don't know i'm not going to say we're going to charge a whole bunch more but again if you should be paying attention to the items that you're sourcing on a regular basis and see if they're being hit with this um because customers are definitely not going to be happy mm. yeah this is another article looks like it might be worth going to go look at five items mm -hmm. that are must buys yep i pay attention to that stuff all these four items that you should buy and save at this store per this expert. So anyway, shrink, shrink has hit us. <laughs> oh man, Kelly. Yeah, thank you've you. been doing it for years and you just don't notice until you're like, wait a minute. This used to come in a pack of 12 and now it's a pack of 10, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> or it's X number of ounces less, which is what happened to us at the beginning of the year when we were buying broccoli from all these, I was like, wait a minute. This package is smaller. <laughs> I had to go, go home and go into my freezer and find the old one because it was the regular size. I was like, yeah, they're selling the smaller ones now. Okay. Um, it says, okay, if you shop at Walmart, be prepared for these changes in the store. Now, I think we talked about changes to the Walmart store before that they have been working on doing a makeover in all the Walmarts. And that mm -hmm. actually could be a uh, savings to you because of the fact that they're going to put some stuff on clearance because they got to make room for this new structure. And so there might be opportunities for you to get things that are a lower price or hidden clearance. Um, I know several of our Walmarts here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, they've been doing that too. So pay attention to that and see if you start to notice the store is l a little different than it used to be. I feel like they're making them, They, I think there was a previous article that me and Kelly Kind of went through and they were making them similar to the targets in some way so you might start to notice some similarities there but yeah so walmart is continuing that trend of 
remodeling the store and changing up things. So that may mean a deal is coming for you or you might be lucky enough to find something that's on clearance only at that Walmart because of the fact that they remodeled it. Okay, vitamin shopping. What is vitamin shopping doing? Doubling down. Oh, they want to buy Kohl's. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the owner of vitamin shopping, this was on the 15th. So, you know, I need to go double check to see if they bought them or not, or if they're just still, you know, vying to buy them. But vitamin shopping owner wants to buy Kohl's for $8 billion. So again, Ooh. Kohl's has been for sale. We've been talking about Kohl's off and on for about the last four to six weeks. Yeah. Mm. It's going to be interesting. So the, I don't know what that's going to If you got some Kohl's bucks, you probably want to go use them before they say you can't use them anymore. <laughs> <Just saying. laughs> that might be something you want to go do. All right. Uh, this one is 25 toddler products from Target that are under $20 that um, parents think they, that are must-haves. So I... Again, this is another one of those BuzzFeed articles. So this is what I would say. I would probably set up some Google alerts whenever BuzzFeed lists something. <laughs> if you're looking for products to sell and you're having, a, you're struggling uh, with trying to figure it out. Now, I will tell you, once the article comes out, you know, more than likely the sales are going to get a spike at that moment. But in the middle of this, you could potentially find some replenishables that you could jump on. And be able to continually sell year over year because people are not going to stop having babies. <laughs> babies are still going to continue to be a commodity. I'm just saying. I'll be like, people are buy stuff for the babies. So I don't know what's happening to my screen. Uh, wait, wait. All right, wait. It was just spinning. So anyway, I'm just saying. Um, I would look at these articles, pay attention to them. I'm going to close this one because it is having a conniption fit. And I'm going to close this other one, too. He's just thinking over and over again. All right. And then what is the next article? The next article is beach accessories and gear. This comes to us from La Joya. And they're talking about 15 things. <laughs> yeah. I am giving you a sourcing list. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am pretty much this whole segment is sourcing list. So... Everything that I've shown you, I think at this point, I've probably given you close to 200 products that you can go and <laughs> or go research to determine if you want to source them, see if there's any complimentary products or anything you can put bundles together. But anyway, so they are talking about 15 must have accessories to go to the beach. And again, people are going to continue to go to the beach here in Texas. They're going to continue to go to the beach until New Year's Day. So <laughs> yeah. pretty much. But, you know, some for, in some areas, they're going to stop going to the beach after October. So that means those sales are going to continue uh, now and, and continue on. So if you can source those items, you can find the wholesale supplier, you find the distributor. If you can uh, pull any of those products and brand it for yourself, if you can, um, you know, find them, then go for it. Okay, this one is, okay, so this one has nothing to do with direct sourcing. It's indirect. And so Screen Rant is giving us a list of the 10 animated movie movies that are releasing after Lightyear. Now, that doesn't mean that they're releasing like this year. That just means that they're releasing later on. So, again, for those people who like, I like to put together bundles. If you've got any Toy Story memorabilia, this is your opportunity, especially if Buzz Lightyear is in it. You might want to go ahead and list that now. Um, it looks like some of the other things that are coming up. Let me scroll down. I don't know what Strange World is. Some of my screens are not coming up. Um, Night at the Museum is coming back, which is cute. Um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. So, again, if you have those books, definitely yeah. go list. If you got any of those movies, T-shirts, uh, backpacks, hats, go for that as well. Um, let's just see. Okay, Diary. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. So you guys can go and look for that article because um, I don't know what's going on. It just, uh, it died on me. Everything is spinning. We had rolling blackouts, so I don't know. I may not be able to get anything back. So let me move on with life. <laughs> so go look for that. It came from Screen Rant. Go look for it yourself. All right. So we're going to transition over to maybe if we cross our hands and grit our teeth we are going to dun, dun, dun. 
go to print on demand when it stops printing. Um, so now it is time for us to talk about e-commerce tips. So every single um, week we host the e-com sellers podcast. Um, it is always on Monday. It's at 8 30 PM. So please share this out. Let somebody else know about it. Tell them that Nicole just gave you a whole bunch of sourcing ideas. Even if you don't use them right now, you could potentially use them later or next year. But in any case, I gave you some sourcing tips um, or ideas. <laughs> So this is where we're talking about, um, we talk about e-commerce news tips and more. And this is our tips and more segment of the podcast. And this time around, we are talking about nine reasons to start your print on demand business. So if you don't have a print on demand business, uh, let me just tell you, this might be a good time to start it. So with that being said, we're going to jump into the fray. Um, Kelly, do you want to take the first one? Or you want me to take the first one? Uh, I don't even know what the first one is. Okay, I'll take the first one. All right. It is simple to set up and simple to start. Here's the deal. I'm not going to say it's easy, but I am going to say it's simple. It's fairly straightforward to get started in print on demand. And so there is going to require some effort. You have to invest some time and effort into doing this. And you're going to have to repeatedly uh, reverse, invest some time and um, effort into it. But once you get this thing going and you continue to build on your print on demand um, inventory, Again, print on demand is fantastic because you don't have to touch anything, but I don't want to steal any of the tips. So I'm just going to say, first of all, it is simple to set up and it is simple to start. I'm not saying that it's easy. It's going to require some effort, but it is simple to start. All right. Next one, Kelly. Low startup cost and low investment. You don't have to go out and buy the T-shirts or the or the ink or whatever they use to you know do it. You can use a print-on-demand uh, company that you can partner with and you just make the designs and when someone makes the order, they, that company will make that t-shirt for you and send it to your customer. So you're not having to buy the t-shirts and buy the machine to make the t-shirts and then buy the paint or whatever to put the design on the t-shirt. You're just designing the t-shirt. So yeah. There's no real cost to, you know, unless you want to do all that and buy the T-shirts and buy the, the, the ink or paint and buy the machine and buy, you know, that's a way more expensive than just making some designs and using uh, companies that provide the um, service of, of printing the T-shirts for you or the mugs or the bags or the, there's so much other stuff you can make besides just t-shirts. Absolutely. And here's the deal. I mean, there are some people that have a passion for making handmade stuff and you can choose to do handmade. But the great thing about print on demand is that if you don't, because if you do handmade, you are going to have to buy those shirts and you're going to have to buy all the ink and, and the machines to do that or whatever um, the that you're going to iron on or uh, paint on or whatever. If you don't want to do any of that, you don't have to. So just saying, some people have a passion for that. They want to be working in their business, like hands-on, hands-on, physically doing that stuff. But again, there is the ability into, with today's technologies. You don't have to do that. The next one is low risk. Again, going back to, I'm not into, I don't have to have a big stockpile of t-shirts in my garage or in my office. I don't have to invest in a printing machine I, or printing ink or printing whatever. I, it's low risk for me to start this business. Um, there's nothing to touch. There's nothing to feel. There's nothing to any of that. Um, if you want to order samples, I encourage you to order samples. But some people run their business without run, ordering samples if they've worked with that supplier, multiple that print on demand provider multiple times. So I'm just saying low risk. Absolutely an opportunity for you. All right. It requires no design expertise. You don't have to be uh, Van Gogh to make these designs. There's lots of programs out there that you can use to make these designs that are, some are free that you can use. Um, and you don't have to be an artist to make these designs unless you're you know if you're artistic that's just extra bonus on top of it if you want to be artistic and make your art and sell it that way more power to you but um you don't need to be you know very art you know artsy fartsy and 
can make design, you know, you know, a, a, a one million dollar Van Van Gogh looking design. You know, you can make shirts with just words on it if you want. Absolutely, or dots. <laughs> Like Pong. I saw a design the other day, old school Pong, for those people who remember the original internet and the original online game with the two lines and the dot that bounced from side to side. Someone made a shirt design that was just two lines and a dot. I was like, okay, that is genius. <laughs> um, it's easy to scale. So again, because of the fact that you're not uh, buying anything, you're not having to spend a lot of money uh, on inventory. And it's easy for you to scale. You can throw up 50 designs if you wanted to. You can throw up 10 designs. You can throw up five designs. You can th throw up eight designs. You can do whatever you want to when it comes to this because you're working with the suppliers and it is print on demand. In other words, when somebody buys it, it's printed at that time. It is not printed until somebody buys it. So print on demand comes in so many different forms. Like you can talk about products that are physically like a stuff that you hang on the wall and phone covers and so artwork, phone covers, pillowcases, uh, blankets, jackets, shirts, hoodies, hats. And then you have the whole book side of it where you can do car, uh, workbooks and, car, and uh, coloring books and magazines. And then you also have the ability to make puzzles. I mean, like print on demand and jewelry and watch bands. And, you know, it is just ridiculous. And tennis shoes, like print on demand is so much more than what people think it is. And um, especially around the holidays, like when people want to get custom made stuff then that's, um, you know, personalized, you can do print on demand. If you want to get something that's embroidered, that is print on demand. It is only made when somebody buys it. So there's so many different suppliers out there that can satisfy those needs of the stuff that I just rattled off. So if you want to have a store that is filled with products that you don't ever touch, print on demand is where it's at. <laughs> like I said, requires no inventory. You're not going to be buying 25 of the shirt you just designed and hoping that it sells. You can, you know, make 10 designs and only three sells, and the other seven don't really do anything, but it doesn't affect your view because you don't have 70 of each shirt sitting in your garage just taking up space. Because, like I, like we've been saying, it's on-demand printing. So that means it doesn't get printed until someone demands it. So yeah. until someone buys it. Yeah. That's, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. <laughs> um, you can quickly create and test products. So it's not complex. I just gave you the example of Pong. If those people want to go look that up, you can. But again, it's two rectangular lines and a circle. That's it. And that was the design. It was on a jacket. It was on a shirt. It was on, uh, I think it was on a laptop cover. I think it was on a phone case. Like you can test it on any of those products. People may resonate with it more on a cover of a notebook than they may resonate with it on a t-shirt. You just never know, but you can test different products. So you can create a product, like Kelly said, as simple as just text. You don't have to do anything that's extravagant, like drawing a dragon. If you want to draw a dragon and that's your jam, go ahead and do that. We're not saying you don't have to. We're saying you don't have to. If you want to, you can. If you just want to write words, if there's a quote that you like or something that you say all the time that's really funny, you could do that. If you want to create, you know, family reunion t-shirts for people and sell them online. You can do that. That could be your service. So again, you can test many different products, many different designs. You could do the same um, text with 10 different fonts just to see which one of the fonts resonates for that text. It's great testing. You don't have to do anything, but just throw it up. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Just be careful of copyright, but we go over I that. Yes, we go over copyright. Absolutely. At the beginning. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Kelly. It's an automatic order fulfillment integration. So there's lots of places where you can put your printed demand um, items on. You could do it on Amazon. You could do it on Etsy. You can do it on Shopify and or 
so there's so many places where you can put these uh, items up and then when a lot of them have integration so that you're not having to go and order all this stuff when it gets ordered on your stores. It just automatically goes to your printer and gets done and automatically gets shipped to the customer. And you're not having to play the middleman in between of trying to make sure everything gets where it goes. Absolutely. That is what's so wonderful about it. So, you know, check some of the platforms and see what integrations are already in place. If you've got a Shopify store, there are a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of integrations available to you. Um, and again, if you're selling on Amazon, like Amazon has Amazon Merch, uh, Merch by Amazon. You also have KDP, which is your book form of uh, printing books and things like that. Um, so again, those integrations are already built into the platform. There's integrations from Etsy to other suppliers. Again, there's a plethora of print-on-demand suppliers available to you. So uh, use the integrations. You don't have to touch anything. You don't even have to log in to ship the order. Now, I would recommend that you just double check to make sure everything is going on its own because nothing. there's nothing like getting a request for a refund because they never received their product. <laughs> so you want to make sure mm -hmm. that things are being shipped, that the integrations are working as they should on autopilot. But yeah, don't touch anything. All right, the ability to customize. So as I mentioned before, I, I think I mentioned like family reunions or creating a, um, you know, some text and having uh, different font styles and font designs um, with the same quote or words or whatever. And again, we do talk about copywriting, but it is so customizable. Um, you can create it. Um, I was just teaching this the other day. It's like, okay, you can create a blue one, a green one, a yellow one, an orange one <laughs> of the same thing. There is one design that is selling like hotcakes and all they did was just change. Like it has a rainbow in it and all they did was just change one of the colors in the rainbow. So, you know, it's got a rainbow. And so sometimes you'll get the rainbow and there'll be a purple streak in it. And then another time you'll get it to be a yellow streak in it. Another time you're going to be a gray streak in it. Another time be a tan streak in it. It's the same words, the same design, same everything. It's just changing one color of the rainbow. It's like, okay. <laughs> so again, making it, you know, unique and people will, are going to resonate. So maybe the purple one is selling all the time compared to the blue one, which goes back to the whole, you can test stuff. So we, we hope this is information is helpful to you. We are in the midst of our summer print on demand challenge. Uh, the challenge is designed to help you and get started in your print on demand journey in June and July. We are still early in the stages. So we invite you to come hang out with us. If you're looking to kickstart an e-commerce business and you just don't even know what to start on, but you don't want to touch a lot of inventory, you don't want to spend a lot of money, uh, print on demand is a great way to get started. We are meeting every day for 30 minutes. That's it. I mean, there's like uh, three days in which we meet for an hour, maybe an hour and a half. But outside of that, we meet for 30 minutes and then we're out. Get your assignment and you're done. So you just go to ecomsellersmastery.com and then you can click on print on demand challenge. Uh, again, go to ecomsellersmastery.com and click on the print on demand challenge. The other thing about the print on demand challenge is it's designed to help you get ready for Q4. Because Q4, is, we are on the heels of Q4. It may not feel like it right now, but we are at the end of Q2. So we're going to be talking about finishing Q2 strong here next week. But, <laughs> and Q3 will be starting. And right behind Q3 is Q4. There is no breathing room. It will be a blur. Q4 will be here before you know. You will blink and wake up and it'll be October. You'll be like, what just happened here? So if you are a person that wants to add one more method of e-commerce to your business structure or your business, um, how your business is run, or if you just want to add this to your arsenal of ways that you can make money, this is a great time to get your feet wet on print on demand, to get started and to look at it. So you can get familiar with it, get comfortable with it, and use it to help you get prepared for Q4. Spend all of Q3 mastering print on demand, playing with it, testing it, tweaking it, getting better at it, and then put some stuff up that you know is going to sell in Q4. Come on, guys. This is your opportunity. In addition to that, we have the eBay Mastery Workshop and the Amazon Mastery Workshop. Your road to 10K, those are happening right now as well. So you can go to ecomsellersmastery.com to get registered for those. Again, ecomsellersmastery.com 
and to get registered for those. And if you're a previous um, e-com sellers customer, for those that uh, jump into the eBay mastery and Amazon mastery, there is a discount there. Um, so here's what it'll look like when you come to the page. You can just go ahead and click on print on demand challenge, or you can choose the road to 10K on Amazon or eBay, either one. But the print on demand challenge is hopping. People are just like, they love it. They like the pace of it. It is something simple. They get a simple assignment every single day. They know what they're working on. They know what they're working towards. They have a roadmap on how to continue this after the challenge is over. So just go sign up www.ecomsellersmastery.com. Go sign up right now. All right, so the next one is Ecom Sellers Academy, the retail arbitrage, online arbitrage leads. This is a great time also to kind of get back into the game when it comes to retail arbitrage. As we go into Q3, we know that in Q3, that's when Amazon qualifies people to be able to sell toys based on your sales. And they, they it starts in August normally, and then they, they do the evaluation in October to see if you're qualified uh, to do Merchant Fulfilled for Toys, which means you ship it to the customer. And if you don't qualify, you're going to have to do FBA. And so some people don't want to pay the FBA. But if you've been you know, working in your retail arbitrage business and then you just stopped and you need a little bit of a boost, a little bit of help, you can grab our retail arbitrage, online arbitrage leads list. You get a list every single week. It's 50 leads that you get every single week. You're getting those leads for roughly about $12.50 a week. So you get 50 leads that you can use right now to go out, make money right now. And you get them for roughly $12.50 every single week. Now, there's not more than 50 people in a group when we sell these leads. But again, it's your opportunity to go out and make money right now. So all of our leads, the average ROI per list every single week is 35%. The average profit um, per product is over $20. Now, some of them are like much, much higher. So when it averages out, some of them are lower. But when it averages out, it averages about $20. The product list is organically researched and sourced. It's audited by U.S. sellers, resellers. And as soon as they are distributed, these leads are designed for action takers. So if you're just a list collector, this is not for you. <laughs> but if you're a person that plans on jumpstarting or restarting your retail arbitrage, online arbitrage lit, uh, business, then this list is for you. I mean, there's nothing like just waking up on Friday afternoon. or well, not waking up on Friday afternoon. Well, if you wake up Friday afternoon, that's fine. <laughs> But hopefully you got up Friday morning. But in any case, you know, get checking your inbox Friday afternoon and um, taking that list and going out and doing some shopping Friday evenings, all Saturday, Sunday, and then doing whatever you're going to do with them, whether you package them up and send them into Amazon or you send them into Walmart or you list them on eBay, whatever your strategy is. But there's nothing like having 50 leads that you can use instantly to go and make money if you want to. You can just go immediately source and sell these products. So I would encourage you to go to ecomsellersacademy.com forward slash R-A-O-A leads. Again, forward slash R-A-O-A leads. And that's Ecom Sellers Academy um, to grab that leads list. We invite you to do that. Um, last but not least, we want to let you know that our Shopify workshop is coming up. It's a two-part series. So if you're doing print on demand, this is perfect because now you can go ahead and take all those awesome print on demand products that you're creating and create your own Shopify store. So the Shopify workshop is a two part series. It's the 21st and the 28th. It's $37. It's 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can go and get registered. So you can join us on the print on demand journey and set up your Shopify store and use the two of them to help you to make a bunch of money. Get started on this print on demand journey and establish your Shopify store. So with that, you can go register at ecomsellersacademy.com forward slash Shopify workshop. Again, ecomsellersacademy.com forward slash Shopify workshop. And I think that's it. <laughs> you can also join us on our daily um, ecom morning motivation that we have every single day. We do it Monday. Well, every single uh, Monday through Saturday is when we do it. So Monday through Saturday, we do the morning motivation. So you're more than welcome to hang out with us. Um, as we do the morning motivation. So we do, we broadcast live in the e-commerce planning Facebook group. And we also broadcast live on Clubhouse and we're going to eventually get to Instagram. We're trying to get there, y'all. I know our gram game is just too weak. <laughs> it's weak. 
We're trying. So with that, Kelly, thank you so much. This has been, you guys, this has been your Econ Sellers Podcast. We do this every single Monday at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. We invite you to come back, check us out again, where we cover e-commerce news, tips, and more. My name is Nicole Whitlock. My co-host on this journey is... Kelly's Econ Mom Ward. And Kelly is amazing, guys. So go check her out. She's on Facebook and a couple of other platforms. And she's got a great YouTube channel with some great tips on there as well. So come back and join us next week. Kelly won't be with us. Nicole will be flying. I'm going to be driving home from North Carolina. (laughs) But I'll be here and we're going to cover the news like we always do and give you what's happening in the news. And we'll go from there. So we'll say goodbye for now. Bye, guys. Hello, everybody. This is Nicole Whitlock with Ecom Sellers. And today in our fireside chat, which is what we're calling it, we don't know what it is. Spotlight interview, fireside chat. We're still working through what it ultimately will be. But I have with me my business partner. My business partner of a very, very, very long time. <laughs> the one who endures all the crazy stuff that I come up with. <laughs> who has agreed to go with me on this wild, wild journey of uh, e-com sellers and many of the other things that we do. Miss Renata Darden. Hey, Renata, how you doing? (laughs) So we're just going to talk about what's happening in our lives, what's happening in our e-commerce business, because this is sort of a fireside chat or just a spotlight interview so that we can just catch up with people that are on this e-commerce journey or selling online. What are you doing? How's it working? Um, And, you know, just peel back a little bit of the layers, not a lot, just to say what's happening in our world or what's not happening in our world, (laughs) because sometimes this stuff ain't happening. (laughs) Yeah, let's let's talk about it. Oh, yeah, that's true. So what's been up with you? Lots, lots and lots. So I think, you know, I know it's been a while since I've been um, alongside my trusty business partner, but there's been a lot going on. Today's Father's Day, so in lieu of anything else, I want to give a tribute to my father. Um, he's not with us, and since my father passed last fall, seems like um, my e-commerce world was falling apart. Everything else was falling apart. It just took me a little while to kind of regroup, and in the middle of all that, I also had COVID, and so, you know, it affected a lot of people in a lot of different ways, and I know that my story is not everybody's story, but you know, here we are. Been a lot going on. Yeah, COVID has been a hot mess. So we already know I had COVID. I think, like, but <laughs> yeah, I, I never... did not need you getting COVID after I went through all of that. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, it was, it was horrible, and mine was bad. But that's all right. God is good. But we do have some, you know, post-COVID weirdness. I think. Both of us have a little bit of post-COVID weirdness uh, with, I, I don't know that I want to call it focus and concentration. There's clearly, I feel strongly that COVID has done something to the brain. There's been a whole bunch of different uh, articles and medical journals that have been written about that. And then, you know, lung capacity for some people is not the same. Mine is not the same. So I know I'm not the only one that's on that journey. And, um, you know, so when I talk about the brain, I'm talking about like, being able to recall something. There are days when I just forget one word. <laughs> I'm like, and it's a simple one word. Of those days for me, I still haven't thought of it. I was driving back from Austin trying to think of a word. It was actually a name. Mm. Couldn't think of it. But I, I do. I, I struggle with, um, you don't want to call it that, but that's exactly what it is for me. Focus, concentration, contemplation, like everything hurts. Like, you know, like how hey, you get that brain. Yeah, you're, you're straining the thing. It, it is. It's a strain. And so, there, like I said, there have been a number of things that I have unfortunately just put off because I didn't have the brain capacity to kind of work my way through mm-hmm. from beginning to end. So I would start it and then find myself struggling a little bit. And so it would get pushed mm-hmm. to the bottom of a very large pile. <laughs> And so um, I am, you say you're guilty of that as well. I am, I don't know, I'm making a commitment to turn things around. We're finishing up this first half of 2022, believe it or not. 
I know. And we're at the end of almost right there at the end of at Q4. The half, right. Yeah, we're at the halfway mark. Yeah. So I, I don't know how the whole half a year has gotten away from me, but I've got a lot of pretty lofty goals. Some of them aren't even goals, just things that I absolutely have to get done. So what's that word? <laughs> not goals, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I'm not going to say commitments. Responsibilities. Uh, that there, have, there are yeah, obligations. There you go, obligations that I've been, I don't know, pushing back um, from, from everything from insurance to my dad's final tax stuff. And that stuff is like way overdue. I did manage to get the extension done, but you know, that's whole new territory for me. I'm an only child. And so it's just me trying to work through some of this and some of it I just didn't want to do. So and I know that some of it will trigger other stuff that I don't want to do. And so yes. I'm just kind of working through it. I am. And I'm sure, like you said, other people are experiencing some things either as a part of having had COVID or even if it was just a part of going through, you know, this pandemic. It's so crazy because I think people think it's over. I was at a huge basketball tournament today, and I was one of maybe three people that I saw. Well, two other people, maybe. I didn't, you know, I wasn't like going around surveying the crowd, but just walking through waves of people, I only saw like two other people with masks on. And I was wearing my mask, and people were telling you, know, I saw people hadn't seen in a while, and people were telling me, Oh, I didn't recognize you. You got that mask on. Yep, you're right. I sure do have it on. <laughs> Keep on wearing it. Yep. But yeah, just as a point of going through something as um, traumatic for some people, um, some of it, like I said, just new, new stuff, having to learn new stuff, having to do things differently, oh, you know, yeah. the adjustment, the adaptation. I know my kids struggle with that. My son, 17, super bright. He wants to blame everything now on COVID. <laughs> you locked me up for a year and yeah. There's a whole lot of stuff that we'll be dealing with probably for some years to come. But yeah, thankfully, I wake up every day with gratitude on my heart because yep. there's a lot of people. You know, we're not old. I don't want to age us. But I <laughs> finished schooling a long time ago. And I'm just I'm at an age where it's like I'm I don't I'm not on social media a lot. But when I am. Every time I open it up, some one of my classmates from high school or one of my classmates from college has passed or, you know, their family members, people are struggling with disease and all kinds of stuff. And so, you know, it, it it's, it's eye opening, even when I don't like I said, that's not what I usually go there to see, yeah. <laughs> go there, you know, for inspiration or to find something, you know, out or I do, you know, try to post just to keep the algorithm going. I don't post a whole lot, but want to engage from time to time with my friends, my family, and my followers. I used to call them thin Um, But yeah, uh, social media has just gotten so depressing. It's just, it's not my cup of tea. It never really was, but now it's just more of a challenge to get on there and find the light. Everybody's lying on social media. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just to find the light. So, you know, yeah. we, call it, we want to be the light. That's what we want. We want to oh be the light. Oh, my gosh. There's a we whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. Helpful. We want to be a blessing. We want to help people through some of these difficult times. And um, if nothing else, I'm resilient. <laughs> We're persistent. We persevere through this stuff. So I get it. Yeah, um, so I have, I won't say we have the exact, we have some similarities in our challenges. You know, mine is right now still struggling to breathe. We were supposed to go do some shop and learns and I'm like, okay, I, I can get around, but the ability to talk and walk at the same time, like I'm going to have to be quiet. <laughs> so I've been working on that. I've been working on That's going to be so hard for you. I know. I'm just like so being able to walk and talk at the same time so i'm working on that um i would say i'd come and help you do some of the shops but the only thing i would want to do is the walking for you i wouldn't want to try to do the talking <laughs> yeah 
So I am looking forward to we have a shop and learn coming up in, I think in July. So I'm looking forward to that, but uh, we were supposed to have one in June and we just, everything didn't get uh, promoted in time, but that's all right. It'll be okay. So we're going to do July, but, um, What's that yeah, date? Some, let's, huh? let's tell everybody what that date is so they can put it on. The okay. Calendar. So you're going to put me on the spot. I had to turn around and look at the thing. I want to say it's like, uh, July the, I got a calendar over here. Oh, oh my gosh. Hold on. Well, we're here July talking. We might as well let them know what the date is. <laughs> <laughs> July the 9th. July yeah, the 9th. Yeah, July the okay, 9th. Okay, everybody. So that gives you time after the 4th and before what's coming up next. Is it Flag Day? Uh, no, Prime Day. Well, yeah, of course that. But I was thinking, you know, everybody, people that aren't necessarily doing e com now, time to get in and get, you know, learn some of this shopping and the shopping learn because you've got, yeah, you've got um, July 4th and then you've got Prime Day. I think there's something else in there, but yeah, that's perfect timing for those of you that have not jumped on the e com wagon. For those of you that have not benefited from all the knowledge that is in that noggin of Nicole's, perfect time, <laughs> perfect time to jump in Get your feet wet. Don't yes. ask her too many questions because she has trouble talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I got if I'm sitting down and talking, I am fine. I can sit down and talk for I won't say hours and hours, but I can sit down and talk for a while. It is the getting up and walking and talking and demonstrating and all that other stuff. I'd be like, okay. So at some point I'm be like, okay, I have to tag out. I need to have somebody to tag and say, okay, you tag me. You would if I could just kind of walk with a camera and then you could just talk about all the stuff and see if you're sitting in the car with a mic attached or something. I don't there know. There you go. Because it's it's a lot. <laughs> but anyway, you know, my, my prayer is that I've been walking every day. So my prayer is that God is going to continue to work on my lungs, even if it's one percent at a time. We're gonna continue to work on these lungs and hopefully it'll get better. And um uh, you know, everything else will get better. Um, I have been working on a lot of, I won't say memory exercises because it's not, it's beyond memory. So here's the deal. I can, there are times I can think of stuff and then when I write it, it's like, I don't know how to spell. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> like, I don't know what that is. I'll look at it and go, is that spelled right? And it's just weird. And I, I don't like this place that COVID has put me in where I don't think I know how to spell. And I have to ask people like, is that spelled right? And I'm like, they're like, what is wrong with this lady? She don't know how to spell. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like the old Nicole, I could just be like, okay, it's, you spell it this way, you spell it that way, whatever. But COVID, psh, please, COVID. <laughs> I second guess everything, but that's all right. It is what it is. So how is everything in your e-commerce business? Well, I'm working through it. That's uh, th that's the phrase that I hear all the time. I'm working through it. Um, thankfully, I, I have to say this because um, Nicole and I, we've been on this journey together for a while, but we've been on other journeys, uh, parenting and um, single parenting. You know, that part comes comes in waves. You know, it didn't all come at once. So, um, but yeah, we've been on this journey for a while, but the things that have we've gone through, you know, not always in tandem, um, but I'm thankful to have Nicole as a partner just to kind of help me think through some of the things that have gone on in e-commerce. As I mentioned, she's got a lot of knowledge up in that noggin, but um, I'm working through it. I'm working through a lot of different things. I'm working through the um, increases in everything on Amazon, not just the fees, not just the storage fees, not just the seller fees. But the paperwork, the requirements, the I mean, everything. And so if you've been along with us on this e-commerce journey, you know that things are a changing. Yeah. And so as entrepreneurs, not just e-com sellers, but entrepreneurs, we've got to change with it. And so I've been um, working through that piece of it with the e-commerce piece, um, jumping on different platforms, um, optimizing listings to get more sales in places that I, you know, kind of forget about stuff when the king, Amazon is king, you know, <laughs> everything's running like it's supposed to, you can kind of put things on the back burner. So I've had to reignite um, things all over the place, reignite Etsy, reignite eBay, uh, get a fire under Facebook. Um, there are a few newer platforms that I'm working through. Bonanza has been good to me over the last um, probably two months. Uh, Walmart was 
Walmart took the took the throne over Amazon for me last year. And then in the middle of all the crazy I had going on a few months ago, Walmart stuck me in the side. <laughs> you know, it's like they're just poking at you and poking at you and poking at you. So yeah, it is a constant um I mean, for lack of a better word, it's a job. And so I know for me, I've said, you know, I've been an entrepreneur mm, years. Let's just say that. Yeah. I had a job at one time and that was years ago. So I've been full time on my own now. Let's see. My youngest son is 15 and I was pregnant. So 16 years. That's a long time. And, you know, that what would I say that? Many times I thought it would have been easier yeah. to have a job. Um, entrepreneurship is not for the weak. <laughs> it's not, it's not. You've got to be resilient. You've got to be persistent. And that, again, is what I pride myself on is figuring things out. Um, yeah. It's It's been, I'll, I'll just put it out there, but it's it's been difficult. It's been difficult trying to move and shake when, you know, Things when the ride was easy, the Amazon, the Amazon train, you know, six years ago was it. I was doing it, and then I somehow pump the brake stand up. So you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> I was doing it. My kids were doing it. My kids were like, we don't want to do this. Like you know, it's like too much. Yeah. And so there were um, obviously there were some goals that I had for Amazon that I, you know, never pursued that would have probably made it easier to, you know, to adapt, to stick and move, adapt with some of that stuff that was coming down the pipe. But, you know, again, everybody's story is not our story. So as a single mom with very active boys, wasn't always in front of it. And so, you know, I had other things going on um, that thankfully for me, you know, I was able to kind of pick this up and put this down and pick that up and put this down and, you know, make the adaptation kind of work for our family. But it, it's not been, it hasn't been pretty. <laughs> it has not been pretty. Well, and I will say this, you know, um, you got COVID before I got COVID and your, you know, your father died in the middle of all of this. That's just a lot for someone to go through. It's a lot for people to go through. So July, August, September, October, November was not for the faint of heart for you or for me. And then to try to reignite, restart, readjust businesses when you've been down, like down, down, like sick down, dealing with, you know, mourning, just mourning the loss of your father, mourning everything else. And then you know, just, okay, now I got to try and make some money. I got to go back to this platform and, and try to make some money in the midst of all of this. I don't have the energy to do it. I don't have the focus to do it. I don't have the time to do it because I have all this stuff to do for my family and for my dad. And, you know, and it was just a lot. I understand. I get it. Um, you yeah. are working through it. You are, what I will say is you are persistence personified like you are right I there one, i need one of those memes that says <laughs> if getting back up was a person <laughs> and then there i am because i've been you know knocked down yeah. a few times in the middle of all that and we you failed to mention you know school started oh. in the middle of that i had high schoolers i ended up changing my son's school i live in a smaller city it's not a little town but i live in a smaller yeah. city where there's just been a lot going on and you know, you hear that all over the place, but the violence has increased and the kids are just angry. You know, the teachers are out of control in a lot of areas. We've had people sharing stuff on um, on social media where you've got the substitutes like smoking in the classroom. I mean, there was just a lot going on. So I made the difficult decision with my son who was super involved in sports to change his school in the middle of all of that. Mm. And that was a whole other yeah, adaptation, yeah. a yeah. whole other thing that we had to, you know, kind of get used to. And so, you know, add to that, I think right after Prime Day last year, Walmart kicked me off of a bunch of listings that were making a lot of money for me. Add to that, right before Thanksgiving, Walmart kicked me off of a lot of listings. <laughs> and I'm going right into Christmas and I'm like, oh my goodness, like really what's going on? 
And so I also have, um, I used, I started real estate investing years ago, probably 20 years ago or more, but with everything else that was going on, you know, picked up Amazon, didn't look back. I probably should have looked back looking at how real estate's doing now, but had a empty rental in the middle of all that, that was not only costing me money, but it was costing me income. So the income wasn't coming in. I had extra money going out. My son was in private school. That was extra funds going out. I mean, we could go on. This chat the juggling, the juggling. could not end if we talked about all of the things that you know life kind of threw at me toward the end of 2021. And so this year has been, for the last six months, has been about kind of regrouping and a lot of adapting. Well, it's been the get back up again gospel song is what it's been. <laughs> That's what it's been. It's been the get back up again, get back up again. Because, girl, <laughs> if y'all know that gospel song, you just play that right now because that is what it's been for her and the journey that she's been on. And and uh, we are, both of us are on different journeys, but, you know, somehow in the middle of this insanity, COVID is playing a role in both of our lives um, so for me, I have been doing a lot. I won't say a lot. I've been doing some brain related exercises and taking some brain related supplements. And I'm hoping at some later point, as I continue to slowly, slowly recover, and I'm not 100% recovered, that I will be able to share those somehow. Um, and then I told you I was going to get the neurofeedback little bands and work on that as well. And so I haven't gotten those yet, but I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully those are all going to be contributing things to help. So, but I know that there has been something that's been sustaining you in the midst of this journey that you've been on, that you've been able to squeeze in a little bit here and a little bit there and work things out. So what is yeah. the thing that's been sustaining you in the middle of all of this crazy? Well, years ago, I used to call it my mad money. Um, now it's my happy money. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it used to just be, you know, kind of the stuff that I would do to, you know, have fun with the kids or go out and do a little bit of extra stuff. That was in my, I'll say previous life, but you know, uh, the dink was different than the sink, <laughs> which is different than the single mom life. Very different. So the double income, no kids and the single income, no kids very different than having kids. So um, I've been ministry shopping for over 15 years, and that doesn't coincide at all with uh, the other entrepreneurial um, ventures that I had prior to having kids, and then right after I had kids, and then getting started with e-commerce. Been doing a whole lot of stuff, but ministry shopping was one of those things that just kind of, I don't know, it piqued my interest. It wasn't something that I thought, you know, a whole lot about, I saw some, I don't want to call them ads, but I saw some um, information out there. And you got to think, you know, 15 years ago, you didn't have Facebook. You didn't have the ads like we see now in social media. You didn't have all that. So I'm sure I just saw it, you know, on Google. I probably Googled something or Yahooed something back then. It came up. I uh, put in a couple of applications, filled out a couple of profiles and started getting emails. And even then, not real sure, you know, how it would play out. Nobody was asking me for money, but it was, you know, if you go here and eat this meal and evaluate the customer service, we'll reimburse you for your meal. Seemed easy enough. And once I got going and saw, you know, checks coming in, again, a lot of it was fast food. I had kids. I was always in the go. I had my little minivan driving around. And so, but it might've been, you know, $15 here, $25 there. I would stop by the mall after picking the kids up and go get cookies, you know, things that we would do anyway. And so I just kind of fit that into our lifestyle. It wasn't anything extra that I was doing. Um, the, the report piece of it sometimes would take me 15 or 20 minutes. And I didn't know that much about what the requirements were. And so I kind of learned that as I went along, but picked it up. Um, the more, the older my kids got, the more things we started doing. And so it went from, you know, fast food to mall visits to water park visits and, you know, things that we would, again, that I could just fit into my lifestyle. So fast forward to, um, becoming a single mom, there were things that I did that I took for granted, you know, before just 
going out and doing things like getting the uh, getting the car washed, <laughs> getting oil changes, you know, those things that I would sometimes that would just kind of get pushed to the side because of my schedule. But being able to schedule those, have them paid for, and actually most of the time finish the report while I was in the waiting room worked really well for me. And so um, when COVID hit pretty hard over this last, I'll say even the last few years, um, I picked up more focus type, focus uh, surveys and that sort of thing online. And again, my PayPal was kind of blowing up. You know, I would do a few a day and it wouldn't take me very long, maybe 20 or 30 minutes. But as we've gotten back into, you know, kind of getting out more, one of the things my kids missed was going out to eat. And so I've just in the last few months, I've been uh, to an amusement park with the kids, water park, bowling. Uh, like I said, I, I haven't paid for an oil change in probably about 10 years. Wow. Those I have. Things, <laughs> <laughs> I have those are things that, um, you know, those are things that, that are helpful. And um, I drive, I don't know what you want to call it. I would say a luxury car, but it's not like a high end. But, you know, one of those things where people say, well, know that the maintenance on your car is going to be more and that sort of thing. But I had mystery shops or evaluations with the dealership. So I was never out of pocket for basic maintenance and for oil changes and that sort of thing. So, again, when I look at it, it's like I've been doing it so long. Not something that I thought a whole lot about. I kind of worked it in to the things that we were already doing. But as I was devoting less time to e-commerce and my kids were home or you got to think about this whole big picture, you know, if they wanted something, then I'd be like, okay, well, let me go find something. And same thing, we travel quite a bit. So when we are out, the first thing I do is I log in and see like what's around. And a lot of times there are companies that I'm familiar with. And so even though we're in a different part of the state, I know that they have those same um, locations, restaurants or whatever. So I can just kind of pull them up, put in a zip code and see if I can find one, which I'm thankful to say probably more than half the time I'm able to find one. Um, and it may just be, you know, because of what my kids tend to like or whatever. But as time has gone on and we've been out more and my kids have wanted to eat out more, mystery shopping has completely changed the game, honey. <laughs> <laughs> change the game because there are some that I do so regularly that, you know, I don't even have to worry about pizza Fridays or any of that stuff. It's like taco Tuesday and pizza Friday. I got that wrapped up. Always. <laughs> that's good. And you get paid to eat, which is okay. a good thing. So and when you were, go ahead. The good thing is I get paid for my kids to eat. So <laughs> let's keep that straight. Cause a lot of times, you know, I've cooked something at home or I'm eating something because I'm in between my 15 jobs that I'm juggling or whatever. But yeah, my kids, if they want something, um, delivery is a wonderful thing. I don't even have to leave my house. They will bring it to me. And again, I want everyone to just keep in mind that one of the reasons I think mystery shopping has, I don't even want to say it's gotten a bad rap because I've recently heard so many people asking me, that's a real thing? Like, you really do that? People didn't think it was real or a few people had already gotten scammed, you know, but the thing that I think kind of makes people shy away from it is you have to pay for things up front. There's no way for them to really give you money to go do something that they don't know if you're going to do it and they don't know how well you're going to do it and they don't know if you're going to meet their clients' guidelines. Yeah. So just to give you an overview, there's tons of mystery shopping companies out here but they're kind of like a staffing company. So they're the middleman. They're, they have clients. Many of them have a whole list of clients and they want um, data. They want to know how their um, customer service team is doing. They want to know how their uh, maintenance team is doing as far as, you know, get, keeping locations clean and that sort of thing. They, they have questions and the mystery shopping companies provide a, a service to them as far as consulting with them on what they can improve and how they can keep the customers that they have. We've talked so many times about how much easier it is to keep a customer than it is to get a new one. And so that's what mystery shopping is all about. And that's one of the reasons I got involved because I am super customer service oriented. And I'm one of those that will 
tip really well for good customer service and ring you if you, you know, aren't doing your job. And so, you know, I wanted to be able to improve the customer experience based on my own personal experiences. And by providing that data to the, you know, the main companies, the, you know, the corporate heads or whatever, they're able to, you know, share that with the trainers. They're able to come back and provide additional uh, training, you know, for their employees. And a lot of times it may even change their guidelines. You know, they find out what's important to the customer, me being the customer, you know, just because someone didn't turn cartwheels when they greeted me, you know, the food was good, the place was clean and inviting, and, you know, the server was friendly. They don't have to be, you don't have to roll out the red carpet, you know, at a fast food restaurant, that sort of thing. So I think it gives them an idea of what the expectation really is, even though they've got all their guidelines and requirements, you know, yeah, if I have to go into a public restroom, I want to know that it's clean. I want to know or be able to see, you know, the last time it was serviced and that sort of thing. So you've got checklists and stuff on the back of some of the doors, not all of them, but, you know, a lot of times the last question on some of those evaluations is if you were the owner, what would you change? That's, Open season. <laughs> Open season. Open season. So it just gives you, you know, a way to kind of give feedback and get paid for it. So what I love about this is it's another way to learn how to figure out how to make money online. Um, it Because of the fact that the one thing that I don't think everybody gets is that, you know, your life, your life was already busy and it went from even to be even more busy because you're always at tournaments and you're always going from city to city at some tournament during the middle of the week, on the weekends, always in the go, 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 go. And so running an Amazon or eBay or Etsy or Shopify or Walmart business, like you got to be on top of your inventory. And if you're in the streets, <laughs> do it, taking your kids here, there, tournaments, doctor's appointments, school because we're going to private schools, all these other places, like always in a car, 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 car. It makes it kind of hard to be able to run your business that you normally would be there to work in it for blocks at a time. So if your day is like, look, I'm only going to be home for one hour today. Like how much of my business can I actually get done in one hour or two hours? You can probably get a lot more done. But when you're on the go, 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 like your life, like mystery shopping makes sense because it gives you the opportunity to make some cash while you're on the go. So if you had to go to the bank, you, you already got to go to the bank. You can do a mystery shop, even do the bank as a mystery shop. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you yep. uh, so I got to go to the bank anyway, do a bank as a mystery shop. I got to go do the deal with these returns. I got to go pick up the kids from here. I got to go take them to the dentist. Is the dentist, is there a mystery shop for another whatever near me? I just did one of those. Yeah. So, I mean, dentist? the number of mystery shops that you find is bananas for me uh, to see, just to witness it. Um, I can remember early on when I first moved to Dallas, Fort Worth, I used to do the focus groups. I didn't do the mystery shops. I did focus groups where you would go somewhere and they pay you like $300, $200, $100 for your opinion. You know, they would be rating everything from some new scent for some aerosol spray, some new Glade scent or uh, something about uh, a question about some, I don't know, vaccine, only because one of them was actually about a vaccine. And, you know, I've looked at everything from stoves and then I would do the testing new foods. So if Pizza Hut was trying a new food, they I would go to their test kitchen place and review and rate that. If Taco Bell was coming out with something new and review and rate, taste that. If so-and-so Fritos was coming out with new chips, I would review and taste that, but I never did mystery shops. I like they, I knew, and I would get paid at the end of all these lovely transactions and uh so that was another way that i made money and then i made, did that same thing when my kids were first diagnosed i used to do focus groups and go out and do that but i never got into mystery shopping so i said this summer i gotta get my mystery shop game on <laughs> because yeah. i got to go somewhere with james brown and rick james and uh we, I need to be able to do that which i can't believe all these years i never really fully took advantage of that yeah, and ironically, it's funny that you should say that, but when I lived in the city that Nicole lived in, uh, there were many more opportunities. So as I mentioned, I moved to a smaller city and I have been able to make it work. 
um, mentioned to Nicole earlier that I was just logging into one of the uh, um, custom, one of the companies and noted on that one that I think I signed up in 2007. So that's what, 15 years ago. Yeah. And for that particular company, I've done 697 assignments. And so having been here for probably at least half of that time speaks volumes because uh, when I log into I'm similar, I think it was probably the same company, but log in here, uh, the general radius is about 20 miles from where you live. You can select that when you sign up, how far you're willing to travel. Many of them default to 20 or 25 miles, but 20 miles from me, log in, see what's available. Uh, 27 shops, 27 shops I can choose from, 27 shops that may or may not fit into my schedule, 27 shops that may or may not, you know, I may not qualify for because it might be a certain phone provider or electricity provider or certain type of car you have to have, any of those things. So 27 is not a big number, and this is just one company, but I can expand that to about 200 miles which would include for me the city that Nicole's in because I'm not very far from her. But if I went out 150 or 200 miles, that number jumps to like 1500 assignments. Oh yeah. I mean, I so, know that Dallas we're there. We got a whole Clearly, yeah, if you yeah. live in a large city, it doesn't have to be, you know, as large as Dallas, but if you live in a larger city, you're going to have many more opportunities to choose from. And so, you know, the, while I was in that area, Nicole saying, you know, she didn't t fully take advantage of it. Yeah, I was doing all kinds of stuff. Like, um, like I said, some amusement parks. Um, we've taken advantage of hotel stays. We've taken advantage of water parks. We've done some of everything. And like I said, when my kids were younger and they throw something at me, something that I either, you know, didn't know where it was in our area when we moved, didn't know where to start or whatever. I kind of started with the mystery shopping companies because I have a son who um, he's on the bowling team for his school. And so even when they were younger, he liked to bowl. And so I live in a city where there aren't a lot of bowling alleys, but I'd say, well, hey, if we're on our way, you know, to Austin or if we're on our way to Dallas or you know, wherever, let's look and see where we might be able to stop, grab a pizza, you know, bowl a couple of games or whatever. We do that oftentimes when we are um, at one of his older brother's tournaments. If we're out of town, and we've got four hours between games, you know, you got to fill that with something. So they like to eat. I'll mm -hmm. put in a, a radius, the zip code where I know I am, put in a radius, see what comes up. And like, hey, how does this sound? I know what their, you know, their favorite cuisine is, what their favorite restaurants are, what their favorite things to do are. So I'll, you know, take a stab at it, see what comes up. And typically that's how we'll spend, you know, the three or four hours between games if we're at a tournament. So, you know, you can make this fit into, you know, the things that you're already doing. Yeah. It's not, you know, a major commitment. You can do as much or as little as you want. After a while, you do have to put in applications and you do have to be selected and you do have to do a good job on the report so that the, the, the schedulers will continue to reach again. out. Yeah, yeah, they'll re reach out to you. And I've been doing this long enough where, um, schedulers would just send me something like, hey, can you do this? And I don't, you know, something, they know which ones I've done. They know which ones I've done well. They like my reports. They see the grammar girl in me. You know, <laughs> they want the reports to be, you know, uh, complete sentences. They want you to spell check. They want to make sure you're using grammar. They want to make sure that you are being completely objective. You know, a good example, you know, just something simple. When you taste something, you can't say, Food was delicious. You know, that's an easy one. Might be delicious to you, but that's your opinion. So you have to give very specific full sentences. You know, the food was, was served hot. The food, you know, came on time. The food uh, tasted like it was made with fresh ingredients. You know, the food wasn't overcooked. Whatever that, you know, whatever that client's guidelines are, everything has to be like based on fact. You can't you know, just throw stuff out there. So, you know, once you get started, again, you can fit it into uh, your lifestyle. You can yeah. fit it into your time frame. You can fit it into, you know, the things that you like to do. And initially, you know, you might take a few low paying shops or shops that, you know, are not necessarily 
ideal to get familiar with the schedulers, to get familiar with their uh, requirements and that sort of thing. But once you're in there, baby, that's when the hotels and the <laughs> and the water parks and all that come in really handy. So I'm doing a um, I'm doing a hotel shop next week. I did a dental shop that paid about the actual exam was about three hundred and twenty five dollars, and they're paying me three hundred dollars on top of that just to get a, a dental cleaning, which you know that fit right into my schedule. It was right on time. Nice. So they're paying for that one, and it ended up being some type of membership. So uh, it'll actually pay for my next cleaning too, because what I paid that day, I get reimbursed for. And it happened to be some type of membership that allowed me to get to cleaning. So you just have to kind of think outside the box in terms of what's available because it runs a gamut. I mean, there are companies out here that, you know, there are startup companies, there are mm-hmm. companies that have been around a long time that are now seeing that they've got to make some changes, you know, to kind of appeal to, you know, newer generations. There's all sorts of things out here. So I say, you know, don't leave anything on the table in terms of, you know, finding what it is that fits with you. Um, there are times when we're someplace, you know, and I don't see exactly what I wanted to do. But guess uh-huh. what? I'm able to adapt and do what's available. You know, we'll do that next time. If there's not a shop available, I'll make it work. We'll do something different. There you go. So here's what I want to say. I think it is totally awesome, first of all. Um, and don't be stuck on, you know, all your mystery shops are going to be food because I know that initially, like for us, because we don't eat out a lot, like we have a very strict regimented diet because my kids are who they are. And then we have our situation is what it is. So we have a regimented diet. So a lot of the places she goes to, we may not be going to be, and that's, you know, part of the reason why I may or may not have done a lot of shops, but thinking beyond that, like she's doing everything from, you know, hotels, she's doing dental appointments, oil changes, getting the, uh, taking the car to the dealership. I mean, it is not just food 100% of the time. So that's the thing you got to keep in mind. So I want to invite you guys to check out sidehustlechicks.com forward slash mystery shopping. Um, I think that if you're a person that's on the go, you got a lot of stuff going on, especially if you got teenagers right now. And if you're juggling, uh, let's see, basketball and bowling and <laughs> and going back and forth on the highway every other weekend or every weekend somewhere throughout the week because you get all these tournaments and things that you got to deal with. Um, if you're on the go, 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 and you're looking for a way to make some money while also saving some money, uh, Mystery shopping may be it for you. If you're looking for an alternative of making money or learning how to make money online, mystery shopping might be it for you. It might, if you're a person that likes to go. Now, I'm always at home, but I'm at home for many different reasons because I have an autistic son and we're just not going to go out and deal with a whole bunch of stuff because I don't have time for all that. But (laughs) when we do go out, like it is, you know, I try to make sure that I keep some things in mind. So I'm like, okay, Renata, we're going to XYZ. I need to sign up. And then I go sign up with whatever company she tells me I need to sign up with and go see what's available to me. And when we're actually traveling, traveling, which is super cool. So that if we have places that we can eat out, like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a place, uh, Panda Express, maybe, that if they have a mystery shop, it's an opportunity. Well, I want to mention something else just because we're right in the middle of the summer. Some people are probably still having, you know, kids that are graduating or just finishing up with graduations. But this is a perfect opportunity for your 18 year old. Perfect opportunity if they're going off to college. Yeah. Perfect opportunity if they're sitting home and wanting, you know, fast food every day. That sort of thing. One of the things that I like for people to at least think about is because you've got to have the money or the funds up front. If your kids get gift cards, whether it's for the graduation or their birthdays, whether it's holidays, they can recycle that gift card over and over and over again using something as simple as mystery shopping. So I'll give you an example. If they get a $50 Visa gift card, they go to a burger joint that offers a mystery shop, they buy it. And then when they get um, paid for it, which is usually about 30 days, it depends on the company, when they get paid for it, that meal is already paid for. That meal that they put on the gift card, 
They've paid for that meal. Now, when you put the money back onto that same gift card, they'll be able to use that money that someone gave to them all summer long. They'll be able to use it when they go off to college if they have, you know, the the inkling to go out if they're not you know stuck in their dorm room they have the inkling to go out and uh, and eat fast food or eat at a casual dining place I think of um, places like Chili's or you know places like that that are kind of nationwide but they'll have that opportunity to take the funds that they have use them to you know eat or partake in you know whatever it is that they like whether it's dessert or whatever that may be and when those funds come back to them the next month start that cycle all over again there you go it's it's a wonderful thing for the youngins <laughs> wonderful thing and again like nicole mentioned you know whether you are on the go a lot like our family is or not you know even if you have kids that are sitting at home but you know riding you about buying fast food all the time or even going to the water park or even going bowling or whatever those things look like this is an opportunity for you to say, well, you know what? We always go to this place, but I found something that you might want to try out. So we'll go try out another place. And it may take you an extra, you know, five or 10 miles away from home. But many of the companies will allow you to request like a travel allowance or, you know, you can bid on jobs. So you're not always locked into the amounts that they want to give you. Some of them that start out as reimbursement only. In other words, they're not paying you to do the evaluation, they're just going to, you know, your food's going to be free. They're going to pay for, they're going to reimburse you for your purchase. But a lot of those, if you tell them, um, yeah, I'm not doing it for free, you know, they come back and it may, they may offer you a few dollars to take care of something. But since I've got two kids, when we go someplace, you know, if the shop is one uh, part of the budget and then the uh, pay is another part. So they're going to reimburse you or your expenses and then they're actually going to pay you for the job. So I want to make sure that at least with those combined, it's going to cover both of my kids' meals. I'm not, I don't shop for free. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And that's the great thing is like, you know, you heard her talk about the dentist appointment and that she got extra cash on top of the dentist load. So it covers the dentist appointment itself and you got extra cash on top of that. Okay. And, yeah. you know, in some of the mystery shops where you got extra cash on top of the reimbursement. So those are always nice or some kind of something. And then I know some of the hotel ones are definitely, we already know reimbursement and extra cash on top of that. Absolutely. So extra cash, extra cash, extra cash is nice, nice to have. So. Then you got to think also about like some of the um, more upscale uh, evaluations like a hotel, they don't want you to just evaluate the facility. They want you to evaluate the service. So guess what? They're paying for my room. And if that hotel has three restaurants on site, they want me to go to each restaurant. We've actually been to full on resorts where they have activities that they want you to evaluate. They have coffee bars they want you to evaluate. They may have a juice bar, a smoothie bar. They may have a dessert bar. They may have nice. whatever they have. Um, they're going to want you to actually, you know, not just walk around and look and see if there's cobwebs in the corner. They're going to want you to evaluate the service at all the different outlets if they have those. Yeah. And so, you know, restaurants, I mean, uh, not restaurant, but a hotel is fun because I get my room paid for. But my kids love it because we're going to eat. If we go for a two night stay, we're going to eat eight different times, you know, just to try to reach all of the different um, outlets that they might have. And that would be at a larger resort. Some hotels might only have, you know, a restaurant and a bar. They're going to want you to do both of those. But if they've got like a convenience store downstairs, you know, send the kids down and get some M&Ms. That sort of thing. I think this is perfect, again, for those people who are on the go. And even if you're not on the go, you can have stuff delivered. Um, she's mentioned restaurants. She's mentioned hotels. You know, there's shops for stores, going to stores just to buy stuff. I mean, if you got to go to the store anyway, might as well just go ahead and do a mystery shop for the store. So if you're in a city like right now, we have a boatload available to us. I don't have the bandwidth to do a lot of these, but I will take advantage of mystery shops when I take my son on our special needs trip that we do every single summer where we're out and about and we are not at home and we are going to be eating, you know, food out and we're going to be staying at a hotel. We're going to be getting gas and we're going to be stopping at stores and restaurants and whatever. We're going to be doing these things. So why not make every single trip intentional? 
register with as many of the mystery shops as possible. Find one in your location where you have to go anyway. Like today, we got to go blah, 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 and do a mystery shop and have that all 100% reimbursed to you within 30 days. I love that. Love it. Well, let me tell you what you'll get if you decide to go and check us out at sidehustlechicks.com forward slash mystery shopping slash mystery shopping. I'm going to give you not just a list of companies, reputable companies, companies that I've either done the assignments for or signed up through uh, a portal that I know, you know, they're all real. The biggest question I get is, well, how do you know if it's a scam? You know, if somebody's asking you to send them money. That's not real. If someone is asking you to cash a check. That's not real. The real ones are going to come in the form of an actual email to you that says, these are the opportunities that we have. There's going to be more than one opportunity listed. You'll have a chance to actually apply to be the evaluator for that uh, for that assignment. And then, you know, you may get chosen, you may not. But again, you know, you start out with some that, you know, may not have been taken over that month just to get your foot in the door. And when you get that first I very rarely get checks now. PayPal is the preferred method. Most of them pay. But when you get that first little cha-ching on your PayPal, where you see that you've actually gotten paid for something that you did, it opens the door wide open to all the opportunities that are out there. And I mean, I have hundreds of companies that I will share with whomever decides, you know, to come along with us on this journey. But I'm sure there's even more, hundreds more than those that I know about. I, like I said, I lived in the DFW area when I got started and there were a ton of them. Many of them have gotten acquired by other companies. Some of them have gone under. Some of them, you know, are brand new. And because I've been shopping so long, the schedulers will, you know, they move from company to company, company yeah. they, they'll, and they know me. So they'll be with a brand new company and then i'll get an email or a text message that says hey i've got this shop are you interested and mm -hmm. i recognize the name but i don't recognize the company it's a brand new company so that gives me an opportunity to go sign up with the new company and see brand new opportunities so yeah this no. is it's a lot bigger i think than people realize um but i've been doing it a long time and it's paid some bills yeah. Absolutely has paid some bills. Like I said, there's, um, you know, the three, three or four hundred dollar shops that I do, you know, on a monthly basis or from time to time, whichever way they come that I got to think about that. But they're paying me for my time. Yes, I needed my, to get my teeth clean. Yes, I needed a dental visit. You know, they did everything. They did x-rays. They did the cleaning. You know, they did the follow up. They did a treatment plan. They did all of that. And so that was something that I needed anyway. But it was still time that I took out of my business to go and help someone else improve their, their business. Yeah. And so, yes, I want to get paid for my time. And uh, after 15 years of doing this, I am completely confident. Most of the time when I receive an assignment, I'll very quickly, especially now with gas prices being what they are, I'll ask for an additional gas stipend. A stipend. Nicole mentioned gas stations. Those were some that for a long time. And because, you know, there's a gas station on every corner. So, yeah. Um, I might log into a company and see 40 shops for gas stations in my area. And it's something that I used to kind of shy away from just because it took a little more time. You know, when you stop to get gas, you want to get your gas and get out of there. <laughs> yeah. Now with the gas prices where they are, I'm scrolling through that list and I'm like, okay, this is on my way to this there place, this is on my way to yeah. that place. And most of them, you know, it's just a few gallons at a time that they're going to reimburse you for because they want you to do things like, evaluate the speed of the pump, evaluate yeah. the customer service, evaluate the cleanliness around the outside, you know, are the trash cans overflowing or whatever. But with gas being upwards of $5 a gallon, uh -huh. I'm going to start picking up, you know, <laughs> at least five or six of those a week. So five or six of those a week, you know, if I don't do anything but fill up my tank once, you know, a week or whatever off of the shops, hey, that's $60, $70, $80 that I don't have to spend out of my pocket. Lots, uh, of things, lots of things to keep in mind, but yes, this can, this can absolutely, you know, supplement what you're currently doing and it can absolutely, you know, pay a bill or two. I use it mostly now, like I said, to kind of fund, I used to always say that, fund my kids summer fun. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. There you go. 
So I encourage you guys to go out to sidehustlechicks.com forward slash mystery shopping. Um, you can get on the wait list. The site will be up by July the 1st, but we'll definitely, you can definitely jump on the wait list. We would love for you to join us or to join her. Really, it's her. I'm just going to tell you the truth. I got too many things. I got too many irons in the fire, too many things on my plate. My plate is full. She already know my plate is super full, but when I got to do something or I got to go somewhere or I got something I like right now, my car is okay. My car is what my car is. My car is broken down. So when I get ready to get my car fixed, I'll be like, okay, she gave me some mystery shops for my style. I'll be like, okay, there we go. We finna go do that. <laughs> well, this is the thing. I know how Nicole's mind works. So there'll be, there'll be a few Q and A's that we'll do. We will do because Nicole has a way of, you know, kind of thinking about things through a different lens. And so I'm sure she'll get some of those questions that'll come through or, you know, help you ask the questions that you might not have thought of because she's been, you know, hearing me talking about mystery shopping for years. And I'm sure there's some of the same things. Some of the reasons she said she didn't get on board. Some of those questions I'm sure will come right on through. We'll be able to get those questions answered. We'll be able to quash any uh, reservations you have about, you know, mystery shopping, whether it's legitimate, we will be able to, you know, get you past any reservations you have about whether or not, you know, you're able to do it and get you started, you know, on the road to making money with mystery shopping. There you go. So we'll we'll definitely schedule a session for those people who want to actually get dig into and ask some questions. But to get registered or get on the wait list, you can go to uh, sidehustlechicks.com forward slash mystery shopping right now. You probably watch us somewhere out there <laughs> on or uh, follow us somewhere out there on uh, Clubhouse. So Ecom Sellers, you can join the Ecom Sellers Club. And I'm confident we're going to talk about mystery shopping over there as well. Um, and we'll probably do an Instagram live. I know the gram is not my friend, but that's all right. We, we're figuring it out. We're going to figure out this gram thing. So we're gonna do it. so that, that way more people have the opportunity to, because if you decide, you know, sometimes people decide e-commerce is not for them for whatever reason. And they've got pockets of time. I was that person that for the longest time had pockets of time. And so mystery shopping might be for you because you have pockets of time. Not saying it's not for those people who don't have pockets of time because it is just depends on what's going on in your life. And um, so it may be an opportunity for you to pay off some bills, get some extra cash on the side, fund your Q4. So consider it. Yeah, buy some inventory. But if you can, I mean, if you can, if you can log on to your computer, if you can order a meal online, if you can, you know, use one of the favorite uh, delivery companies, then you can mystery shop. I mean, it's a, it's that easy in many cases. Um, you're going to order a meal. They're going to ask you how long it took. They're going to ask you if the website was easy to use. They're going to ask you if you got your meal in the quoted amount of time. Those are my favorite ones. You've got five or six questions and you're eating. There you go. <laughs> you don't have to sit down and write out a whole long report, hey. you know, like I said, with the with the grammar girl, you know, sitting over your shoulders saying, uh, 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 you used a subjective sentence there. <laughs> you know, it can be just as easy as uploading a few pictures. And the next thing you know, it's, you know, chow time. Yep. You can kind of go on about your go on about your day, but you can do that, you know, over lunch while you're working your business. It doesn't have to be, you know, a long, arduous process. So we just want you to know that you can get started. I want you to know that it is real. It is legitimate. I've been doing it for 15. a long time. A very long time. <laughs> She's been doing it a long time, y'all. But look, she and I have known each other since I was seven and she was eight. So I'm not going to say how old we are, but the point is she's been doing this for a very long time. She has talked to me about it. I signed up for some stuff a long time ago. I don't just not do anything, with, but that's okay. I did do some of the focus groups. Those were really good and they were very, very helpful in helping me to get therapies for my kids. So I do recommend it. They are in some ways similar to mystery shops, but not exactly the same because you're doing it with a group of people or, you know, getting your feedback on some new, pizza that they want to offer at Pizza Hut or whatever. So, um, but that's going in with a group of people. So this is your individual contribution. So um, just know that it does pay. So clearly well, it does. You know what's coming next with the side hustle chicks? You know, Nicole's done the focus groups. I've done the mystery shopping. So we'll get you onto the focus groups if you want that too. It's like <laughs> nowadays. Yeah. 
I've all done a lot of focus going groups. on. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, I do, I do delivery, I do pickup, I do drive through. Uh, very rarely will I actually go in and actually have a meal. So you know, I do what fits my personal scenario. I do what fits you know what we've got going on and. You know, the other the other option is online. You know, you order online and you go pick something up. And that's not just food. That's in the malls. That's, you know, some of these dessert places or whatever. But, yeah, if I'm going to be up late working, you know, I can schedule that into my um, into my plan two o'clock in the afternoon. But it may not be, you know, might be my late night snack before, <laughs> you know, I get on a live with my business partner. You never there know you when. I might need to have that, you know, tucked off in the back of my refrigerator. If I put it in the front, my kids will take it. But yeah, there's so many different opportunities, so many different ways that you can uh, find to use mystery shopping as just another tool in your tool belt. You can use it, like I said, to kind of pay for the summer meals, the extra meals because your kids are at home. You can use it to take care of, you know, some of the maintenance on your car because right about now where everything is more expensive. If someone's reimbursing you for some of this stuff, why not? I, I pride myself on the fact that I haven't paid for an oil change in since I can remember. I really have not. I mean, you know, they don't come out. Um, most of them come out like every month, just different companies or whatever, but I don't need an oil change every month. So I've got to be real strategic about making sure that I jump in there and get an application in when it gets, you know, close to time for my oil changes. And it's something that I, I've always done. I've always done it. And I've always, you know, made sure that I kept the maintenance up on my vehicles by doing it that way and making sure that I don't have to pay for it out of pocket. There you go. All right. Well, it was good to catch up with you. I'm so excited. This is yeah. going to be great because then I can come back and tell everybody how we save money on our summer excursion. My son, again, we, we go to a special needs retreat every year. We've been going this. We are eighth year, ninth year. I can't remember. But um, so I will be able to tell everybody, look, I already know it works, but I'll be able to tell you guys, okay, this is this is what we saved money on. And then when I get my reimbursement, not that I can hold up a physical check, but I'll be like, I got my check. No. <laughs> I got my baby. Yeah, there's still a few companies that offer it. Not very many. Most of them have gone. Some of them have their own payment portals. I don't like that way very well because then I got to track it and go back, you know, and look at everything. But most of them do either direct deposit or PayPal. And I love it. But like I said, because my PayPal actually has a notification on it. But when I hear my little cash register go off and I know that I've gotten a payment, um, with one of the companies, like it's an email. So it will literally, like if I've done 30 shops in that month, mm -hmm. it'll go off like 30 times in a row because they're paying me individually for each one. I like that. You know, it's not just like one big nice. payment. It's like, I know how many assignments I did. So I yeah. know that I've gotten paid for each one of them. And not all of them do it that way, but it's just another, another thing to look for. All right. Well, what I want you guys to do is share this out. With a friend, let somebody else know about Mystery Shops. It's all coming um, <laughs> up, and we want to be able to share this information with you. We'll host a live Q&A at some point. We'll get that scheduled. You'll see it somewhere on our social media. And if you get on our mailing list, we'll email that to you. Um, watch for us to be on Clubhouse, Ecom Sellers. And, um, you know, consider this. This is a great way to raise some extra capital for Q4. I'm just going to say it. So with that... Renata, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I it's truly always appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this has been another edition of, I guess, the Ecom Sellers Podcast Fireside Chat or Spotlight Interview when today's guest was Miss Renata Darden. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. Thank you. Let <laughs> things we say. Bye for now. Bye for now.